now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Samurai Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on Kung Fu killers in this action-packed martial arts Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Samurai Goddess, in paperback and e-readers today. I've been watching many of the Netflix series that are a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And while I really enjoyed Netflix's Luke Cage, I was thoroughly disappointed with Netflix's Iron Fist. In fact, I was so disappointed with Netflix's Iron Fist, I literally had to stop watching it at the sixth episode. I just got tired of watching first-year screenwriter mistakes being presented to me every with every episode, so I just had to stop with that series. And I decided that I was going to move on to the Netflix series Jessica Jones. Now, the Netflix series Jessica Jones is based on a comic called Alias, which is part of the Marvel Max series established by Brian Michael Bendis. And Brian Michael Bendis created the Jessica Jones character because he couldn't use the Jessica Drew character, who was the original Spider-Woman. And he wanted to kind of retcon the Jessica Drew character and create a new story for her. Unfortunately, Marvel just would not let him do that. So he created this Jessica Jones character and fit her into an, his own sort of retroactive continuity. And that foundation pretty much is a really shallow one when you look at the Jessica Jones character. And that's what leads to this really weak adaptation of this character. Now, when you look at the original Spider-Woman in the Marvel comics, she started out as a sort of strange superhero who eventually worked her way into becoming this bounty hunter for a while in the comics, and then eventually became this private investigator. And I can see where Bendis wanted to use this in the modern era. Unfortunately, because he tries to retcon the character, again, with this, with this imitation, it's a, it's a really shallow foundation, and that really leads to a really, really shallow adaptation, because this premise could have been something, but due to the weak foundation of the premise and the poor execution of the premise, we are stuck with a really half-hearted, really flat mystery show. Now, the Jessica Jones series opens up on a scene which pretty much presents one of the big problems with many of these Netflix series is that they tell instead of show. They give us this voiceover telling us that Jessica Jones is some sort of, you know, private investigator and that she's doing all these little sleazy jobs for all these clients and most of them are you know, sexual in nature, where she's looking at cheaters and stuff. And that's not really strong enough when we're talking about a super-powered private investigator. The big problem with this series is, is that, again, it just does not dig deep enough. When I look at this series, I, I, when you have a super-powered private investigator, you just don't start with telling. And this is the big problem with a lot of these Netflix series, is that they tell instead of show. I really wanted to see this Jessica Jones, who's supposed to be the superpower private investigator, actually using superpowers to go out and try to investigate these cases. That's what this series really should have been the big hook on. Here's this superhero, or former superhero, and she's going to go out here, and she's going to go out, and she's going to try to solve cases that other detectives just can't. She's going to use her skills to use to, um, try to get clues that other detectives can't, and she's going to see things that other detectives just can't do. And that wasn't presented in, that, in, the, in the opening act. That pretty much gave us a voiceover, then showed her arguing with the guy, and then she punches him through a wall. And that, again, just wasn't strong enough. That pretty much told us what she was, but it didn't give us a reason to care. And that's one of the big problems with this Jessica Jones series, is, is that it just doesn't give us a reason to care about the character. There is no real personality to this character. There is no real voice to this character. And there's no real substance to this character. She's just a really shallow character who we're told is this hard-boiled private investigator in the mold of old Pulp Fiction characters like Mickey Splains, Mike Hammer, or... Mike Shane, the detective from that Pulp Fiction series, or just like the indie comic character Ms. Tree, who was created by Max Allen Collins and Terry Beatty, 
but she has none of the substance of any of those characters. And her stories pretty much don't have any substance either, because when I was watching the first episode, we were given her first case, and it pretty much was, it was like this case where she was supposed to help these parents find this missing daughter who was a college co-ed. And instead of us getting a mystery filled with clues and suspense, we just got sequences of stuff happening. Her taking her camera to go out and stalk this Luke Cage, um, who was presented in a completely different way than the way he was presented in the Luke Cage series, which really... When I look at the way Luke Cage was presented in this series, it pretty much offended me because in that first episode, Luke Cage of Jessica Jones, Luke Cage is pretty much presented as some sort of sex object and some sort of chocolate fetish for Jessica Jones. However, in Luke Cage, he's presented as a rich, multi-dimensional character. And that's one of the things that really irked me about Jessica Jones. And it also showed me the difference between a black writing team and the white writing team. The black writing team pretty much presented Luke Cage as a multi-dimensional character. Jessica Jones' writers presented Luke Cage as some sort of chocolate sexual fantasy. And that, that really, really showed me how shallow the series is. Moreover, what really also showed me how shallow the series is, is that there really was not much focus on many of the core elements of a good mystery, such as the suspense, or the plot points, there was just stuff just just happens here, and it happens just because they want it to happen. There's no real twists and turns in this mystery, and the, everything leads up to this climax where the Jessica Jones character saves the college co-ed, brings her back to her parents, and then we're and and along the way we're learning about this so-called Purple Man. And I look about this whole Purple Man concept. I didn't like that concept in the comics. And I didn't really like it executed here. And I didn't like it because this guy is pretty much being set up to be a purple straw man. He's set up to be a heel we're, we're told to hate. And the reason why we're told to hate him is because we're told that this purple man is some sort of perverted deviant, sexual deviant, and that he gets off on humiliating women. So he's being set up as some sort of straw man that Jessica Jones can easily beat up. And this is one of the big problems I have with superheroines and series related to superheroines is that no one really focuses on developing really strong villains for superheroines. They just give them really weak villains that they can just easily beat up or easily challenge. And the Purple Man pretty much fits this same mold. He's pretty much presented as a bad guy we're told to hate. There's no real relationship between Jessica Jones and this guy established in the first episode. We're told that she has some sort of PTSD, but again, this really doesn't build into anything. We're just told everything. And again, that's another big problem with many of these Netflix series. They tell us things, they don't show us things. So I'm not shown any reason to care why this guy is such a monster. I'm not told any reason why this guy should be a threat. I mean... All we see is that this woman has, that he's gotten under his control had a suggestion, and then she went to go kill her parents with, at the end of the episode. And that's supposed to be some sort of plot twist, but it's a weak plot twist because this series really didn't do a good job of establishing Jessica Jones' character, um, telling us what she wants to do, and why we should care. The first three questions a screenwriter has to ask before they go out here and write a single script. And the other thing that they did was they just didn't establish a strong antagonist. This Purple Man, as I see it, even back in the comics, was not a strong enough antagonist for Jessica Jones. He's basically, again, set up to be some sort of purple straw man for the audience to hate. And that's just not good writing. And that's the big problem with the Jessica Jones series, is that the writing just isn't there. And when I think about, you know, really strong heroines, this is not the series I would really consider for adaptation because the series is just not, the comics just weren't that strong and the character just wasn't that strong. Especially when you've read, you know, indie series like Max Allen Collins and Terry Beatty's Ms. Tree. Now, Ms. Tree, pretty much, Michael Tree was a great character. She was a really strong detective, very intelligent, and she used her skip, detective skills to solve crimes and sometimes she would and she would meet out justice with her pistol 
and there would be a large body count in many of her um, comics, but the stories, the mysteries were tight, and they were on the level of those old school pulps that pretty much inspired um, the mystery character, such as Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer or the Michael Shane mysteries. They were right on the same level in terms of quality. They were right on the same level in terms of story. And when I think about a great series, that mystery series is the kind of series I would have wanted to see presented on screen. When I look at this Jessica Jones series, it's a really flat series. It's really one-dimensional. And it's just meant to fill in a gap in the Marvel Cinematic Universe on Netflix to give us a female character. And if this is the type of heroine that they're going to try to present in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, then I'd have to say the Marvel Cinematic Universe is in trouble because I see a lot of the problems that Marvel Comics and, and many other comic book companies have in developing strong heroines. They do not really focus on the things that really work to make a good comic featuring a female lead really work. And one of the things I did not see in there that I see in many novels that really work is relationships between women. And when I look at the Jessica Jones series, there was really no real interpersonal relationships between, you know, Jessica Jones and any women in this series. And that's one of the so the foundations of a solid series featuring a heroine. You really have to focus on those interpersonal relationships, those social relationships, because that's what's going to drive the story in with when you're working with female characters. I know this for a fact because I've written fantasy characters such as the Isis series and the East Steam series, but I've also written young, successful young adult fiction novels such as the Thetas and Smisterella and Spellbound, which feature heroines, and you really have to focus on those relationships between the heroine and her friends, her family, and other people, and that's going to lead to a very interesting um, series that really compels people to keep watching. With the Jessica Jones character, she's just by herself, and then she just interacts minimally with people, and that's just not enough. You really have to focus on developing those interpersonal relationships. Moreover, you have to understand you cannot set up straw men as the antagonist. Whenever I write heroines, I always focus on her female enemies because the real story is with the female enemies whenever you're working with super heroines because it, a lot of people would look at this purple man and say, oh, he's a pervert and a deviant and he's out to humiliate Jessica Jones. And yeah, that's what the character is, but I'll, from what I've known from personal experience and social interactions with women, women are crueler to other women than they are to men. And when you have a heroine, she is going to be crueler um, her en her female enemies are going to be crueler to her than any purple man ever could. And that's why I say that that whole purple man character pretty much is a cop-out. Because I look at this purple man character, and again, he's just, he's an easy villain. He's an easy setup. He's not somebody who you can really build a real rivalry with or a real arch-enemy relationship with that will keep viewers compelled to keep watching um, even the first episode, because I looked at this whole Purple Man character, and there really wasn't much to him. I think if they had given her a stronger villain, the series might have been a little bit more interesting, and if they had introduced the villain early on, maybe I would have had a reason to care. But from what I saw in the series, it just was not strong enough to me. It wasn't compelling enough to really keep watching it. All I saw was, you know, some deeply troubled character who pretty much was being set up as some sort of perpetual victim. And that's not what I want to see in a superhero series. I really want to see a character being strong. I really want to see a character being confident. I really want to see a character who's supposed to be a superpower detective using their detective skills to solve mysteries. I mean, I, what I came into this series was I wanted to see a detective series. I really wanted to see a mystery. And I felt like I was cheated by this series because... It was just a bunch of random events thrown together with no real plot, no real character development, and no real set of story. And when I look at this series, it just it just not it just wasn't enough. It was it was it was really taking me back to Iron Fist when I thought about Iron Fist's really bad writing 
And this series had just equally bad writing on it and really the same type of underdeveloped characters and first-year screenwriter mistakes that I, that I, I saw in Iron Fist. And I expected, you know, a little bit better. But when again, when I think about this series as it relates to Marvel's um, movies like Captain Marvel, if this is the if this is the best they can do with heroines, they're in a lot of trouble because it really when I look at Jessica Jones, this is not the fount this the standard you want to set when you're writing heroines. You really want to again have a strong character that's rich, multidimensional, and allows the viewer to identify with them and has positive character traits. Jessica Jones had absolutely no positive character traits. She had no real, you know, anything anyone would want to relate to or identify with. She was just a big, angry character who was really flat and one-dimensional. And what's really sad is you had a great actress in Kristen Ritter who really could have really pulled this role off if she had been given a quality script. I saw her work in Don't Trust to Be in Apartment 23, and she's really a strong actress, very compelling, um, and very good at what she does, but they just didn't give her anything of substance to work with in this script. This, these scripts just, they're not up to par, and I really think that Marvel Studios, it, when they do these Netflix series, they really need to slow down, because I'm looking at the timeline here between these production companies, and it's clear to me there's a real big problem with the writing. The writing here, you know, it's, it's telling instead of showing and it's, there are really so many amateur hour mistakes, and these amateur hour mistakes are really preventing their series from being the best they can be. I just can't recommend this Jessica Jones series. It just doesn't work for me. Um, it's really, it's just really poorly developed. And when I compare this character to her contemporaries, like the original Jessica Drew and Max Allen Collins and Terry Beatty's Ms. Tree, she just doesn't measure up. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.